All right, what is it like to live on Topsail Island? Let's talk about it right now. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Living in Jacksonville. I'm Avery. I'm with American Home Team at EXP Realty. And as much as I love making these videos for you guys about all things Southeastern North Carolina, I would love even more to help you with the real estate needs. So that phone number and email address on the screen, that is the best way to get in contact with me. If we can help in any way, shape, or form, we would absolutely love to. But guys, diving into the video today, we're discussing what it's like to live on Topsail Island and considerations prior to buying a home here in Topsail Island. What areas, what are some considerations, the cost, so on and so forth. Let's go. All right, so Topsail Island is an amazing 26 mile stretch island. It is a barrier island, which means that it is separated from the mainland and it is accessed by one of two points. The first point is Surf City via the Surf City Bridge. And the second point is Sneeds Ferry via the Sneeds Ferry Bridge onto North Topsail Island. Topsail Island is broken up into a couple different sections. You have North Topsail at the very north end, you have Ocean City, you have Surf City, and then you have Topsail Beach. And what I like to call its own little category, which is Serenity Point on the very southern end, which is a lot of acreage that is untapped, undeveloped, that a lot of us locals go and watch the sunsets there on Serenity Point. You ap get absolutely the best sunsets. Now with that said, I always tell my clients that the part of Topsail Island that they're gonna wanna live on really depends on their lifestyle, right? Are you a boater, right? Do you have a boat? Do you want a dock, right? Cause that's gonna tell you what part of the island that you're gonna live on. Not every area has a boat dock or a lift. So if you're on the beach side, you're gonna have to pay for some boat storage, right? But if you're on the sound or the inter intercoastal, you may have a boat slip that you can utilize for your boat. If you just want to wake up, take a couple steps and be on the beach, then obviously you're gonna be on the beach side, but you're also talking about a slightly higher price point. And then we kind of move into the conforming and non-conforming lots, right? North Topsail Beach on the north end of the island has a variety of non-conforming lots. And so what does that mean? It's a whole bunch of camera and insurance mumbo jumbo, but essentially the house, if a hurricane comes through and wipes out over 50% of your home, camera may or may not allow you to rebuild or renovate that property. So that's the non-conforming part of it because you're within a certain allowable area to the actual beach. And really it depends on the natural vegetation from the beach and the, the dunes to your house and there's a setback there. And so Cama's only going to allow you to build within a certain parameter on that lot. Now with that said, not all areas are non-conforming. A conforming lot says that you're within those parameters and if a home were to be 50% or more wiped out or damaged uh, as deemed by the insurance company, you probably could go ahead and renovate or rebuild that house and CAMA would issue that permit because you have enough land mass, enough space between the beach, the dunes, and then your house. So really CAMA is just a, it's just an entity to ensure that the process of rebuilding on the beach is followed and that you're not building a house directly on the beach because we do have a receding shoreline. As with every shoreline in the United States, it's pretty much receding. North Topsail Beach, because of the New River Inlet, is receding at a little bit of a higher pace, a little bit of a faster pace than the south side. So you will notice that you get a little bit more land, a little bit more space in your backyard with the dunes in Surf City and the south side of Topsail Beach. So some people do find it more preferable to purchase on the south side than the north side. However, the north side, you are a little bit closer to your amenities. You can go right over the uh, Sneeds Ferry Bridge and get your stores, your shopping, you know, your restaurants, that kind of thing. Whereas if you're all the way down on the south, south end of the island, it is gonna take you a little bit of a longer drive, especially during peak season, to get into Surf City, to go over the bridge and get to your shopping and all of that stuff. Although Surf City does have its own grocery store, it does have all the restaurants right there. It's a little bit more of your vacation or tourist area, which brings me into your intent on purchasing coastal real estate. 
Are you looking at using it as an investment property, right? Like a short-term rental, maybe a long-term rental. Are you looking at uh, a second home or a vacation home for yourself? And so in either of those cases, I would recommend reaching out and discussing the particular area that you're interested in. So some parts of the island will warrant a little bit higher short-term rent, right? With your Airbnb, certain square footage and bedrooms obviously are going to warrant a little bit more rent uh, for the week. I know my team uh, has a property under contract around $5.2 million that it generates around $600,000 per year due to short-term rentals as well as weddings. And that is on the north side of the island. And while I'm at it, guys, this house is for sale. It is on the market currently by a team member for $2 million. It's seven bedrooms, seven and a half bathrooms, and three stories of ocean views, complete serenity, and steps from North Topsail Beach. This house currently has just over $100,000 already booked for 2024. So if you're interested in falling in on immediate rental income, these are short-term bookings, immediate rental income, this is gonna be the house for you. We will provide those bookings to you, but instant cash flow, instant revenue source. And if you're interested in that rental aspect of it, the short-term rental aspect of it, this house could be a fantastic choice for you. Now, if you are looking at uh, using it as a second home or a vacation property for yourself, there's some things to consider. The first consideration is who's gonna manage that property while you're gone, right? And also, what kind of things are you going to do to your home to make sure that it is less impacted by storms over the winter months or whenever you don't occupy the property? So things like uh, storm shutters, right? To block your windows from wind and hail and uh, you know possibly some flooding and things like that are going to really pay off in terms of your investment because your property is uh, less likely to be severely damaged by the weather that we get here in hurricane season. But ultimately it is going to depend on your risk tolerance and then your lifestyle. If you want a boat and you need to be able to store your boat in your backyard, well, a Soundside property is gonna be for you. But if you want to step out onto the beach from your backyard, then a beachside property is gonna be for you. Not always, but 99% of the time, a beachfront property is going to be a little bit more expensive. You can find some townhouses or duplex type homes, no less than around $500,000 a year on the beach side. But generally speaking, you are going to be in that 800,000 up to the record setting sale right now under contract is $5.2 million. And that is under contract by one of our team members. But the majority of homes here on the island are on the beachfront are going to be in your million to $2 million range. So something to think about if you don't really have that budget. But what I would recommend is that, hey, if you're looking at it for a investment purpose, right? You want a short-term rental. If you have investment property somewhere else, 1031 that property into this one. It will help a lot by saving you in taxes. You can forego all of your exchange taxes, all of your transfer taxes by just doing the 1031 exchange. You won't have to pay your capital gains. So something to think about if you have other investment properties, other assets somewhere else, exchange them into Topsail Island. You can't go wrong, especially if it's already incurring some revenue. And then just a little bit of housekeeping. There are, uh, like I said, there's only two ways to get on and off the island, right? You have Sneeds Ferry Bridge, which is North Topsail Beach, and then you have the Surf City Bridge, which is obviously in Surf City. Surf City is going to take you to all of your shopping amenities, your restaurants, all of that stuff. Sneeds Ferry has a little bit less uh, shopping and amenities and that kind of thing, but it is growing. It's one of the fastest growing areas in this part of North Carolina. But as far as medical facilities and things like that, um, yeah, if you live on the island, it's gonna take you a few minutes to get to those medical facilities, to get to the dentist office, the vet, right? Like all of those things that you need to do on a daily basis or you know, weekly or monthly basis, depending on who you are. Um, you know, It's gonna take a little bit longer of a time, especially during peak season. So June, July, August, you will be held up in traffic a little bit more than usual, but the remaining of the year, it's beautiful, not a ton of traffic. 
and um, you can still get to your amenities. But the main amenities are gonna be off the island, over top of the Surf City and Sneets Ferry Bridge. Um, so, you know, if you're in your older years, need a little bit more of uh, medical care and that kind of thing, Topsail Island might not be the place for you just because it is gonna take a little bit of a longer time to get on the mainland to uh, get your medical services. So something to think about. What I'll say is that uh, the ambulances here, you know, emergency services are very, very good at getting people the help they need and very quick. But, you know, if it's a little bit more of an emergency situation, obviously uh, every little second matters and mainland is gonna be a lot faster than on the barrier island. So something to think about on that. Additionally, if you cannot do stairs, if uh, you don't want a multi-level home, the island is likely not going to be for you. There are a few ranches, right? These little cottages with one floor, two bedrooms, one bath, that kind of thing that sell in a reasonable price point, you know, around three or $400,000, but they are second and third rows, um, but they don't come available very often. They are very small and not a lot of people see the value in spending four or $500,000 on a two bedroom, one bath. So the majority of the homes are multi-level and your main living area, your kitchen, your living room is gonna be on the upper deck. So your second or third floor. So if you can't do stairs, right, you're gonna to wanna to think about in, uh, installing a elevator, which some homes have, but not all of them. And if you don't want to spend the 40 or $50,000 to install an elevator, then a island home, it might not be for you. But you could go right over the bridge in Surf City or Sneets Ferry and find some ranches that are like right on the other side of the bridge. So you get the intercoastal, you drive over the bridge and you're right on the beach with all the amenities of the beach and stuff. But I just wanna throw that out there. I did have uh, one couple call me, they are retired, they cannot do stairs, and they asked what they can find with no stairs. And it is out there but it's very few and far between. So, you know, if you have a, a decent sized budget, right? And you're in that five, 600,000, but you don't want stairs, maybe you downsize a little bit and go to one of these two bed, one baths for around 400,000. Might be up your alley, but the majority of uh, these homes do unfortunately have stairs and the main living is gonna be on your upper level. Now, the other thing I'll say is comparing to other beaches. This is a smaller beach. Um, it is the depth of the beach is a little bit wider than that of, you know, Oak Island for sure. Uh, maybe Wrightsville Beach. Wrightsville Beach is a lot more touristy and uh, you get more people spread out on the beach. Where I'm standing is Access Point 6. It's a local, locally known secret uh, because it's free parking and you get a little bit more elbow space uh, here on the beach. As you can see, there are people on the beach but there's gaps in between them. And this is being shot at the end of May, uh, right before Memorial Day weekend. So we're about to kick off into our busy season. But what you'll find is that in this location, the majority of the beach is going to be like this. But this is definitely a little bit more of a laid back beach. It is not your hustle and bustle like maybe Wrightsville beaches. We don't have a, like a big boardwalk um, or you know anything that's super, super walkable. Uh, you can definitely walk up and down the island. Um, like I said, you know, it's 20, 26 miles long. So, um, you know, that's gonna be a long walk going from end to end. However, if you're in Surf City uh, and you wanna walk from a, a, like the pier to the restaurant or the store to the restaurant or what have you, you can certainly do it. Um, but it is not uh, gonna be, you know, like your Jersey Shore boardwalks or, you know, anything like Siesta Key where it's super busy and touristy. And that kind of thing. This was once once a hodunk fishing town. So something to think about if you're looking for a little bit more of your commercialized beach, Wrightsville Beach is going to be a little bit more of that area for you. Maybe even Atlantic Beach on the other side. So something to think about on that end. But um, Topsail Island is a fantastic place to live, to invest in, uh, and there's a lot of solid amenities in the area that you can take advantage of and that a lot of locals take advantage of as well. So whether you're looking to make a move in nine days or 90 days, I would absolutely love to help you do so. Once again, the price points here, uh, really just think about it over 500 for the majority of the houses. 
Uh, you can find the majority of houses in that 750 to 1.3 million dollar range, but there are a bunch that are in you know your 1.75, 2 million, 2.25. So if you're coming here with a pretty high budget and you want to invest, let's start looking at the numbers. Let's look at possible revenue uh, on some you know short-term rentals and what these people have to offer. Um, and then we'll go from there. If we can help, we would absolutely love to. Once again, my name's Avery Hamilton with eXp Realty. The phone number and email address on the screen is the best way to contact me. Uh, but until the next video, guys, hope you have a good one. Peace. See ya.